the name dietary fiber, we refer to a wide and extremely diverse group of substances that are different in structure and chemical composition, but share one important property. They cannot be digested and absorbed, so that they travel intact all the way through our stomach and small intestine to our colon. For this reason, dietary fiber has been considered for many decades as a useless component of food, if not detrimental because it hinders nutrient absorption and may even damage the intestinal wall. We know today that this idea was totally wrong. Although fiber is undigestible, it is of the utmost importance for the health of our GI tract and our whole body. Most but not all dietary fiber is made of undigestible carbohydrates, that is, sugar molecules linked together by bonds that cannot be broken down by our digestive enzymes. We said that the classification of all different substances that meet the definition of fiber is very complex from a chemistry point of view, and it goes beyond the scope of this course. From a nutritional point of view, however, it is much more useful to classify dietary fiber in two groups based on how it combines with water soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber dissolves in water. It is also called viscous fiber because it can form gels with water and it has unique gummy properties that are relevant both in food technology and in our GI tract. In food, they are used as a thickening, gelling, or stabilizing agent. In our GI tract, soluble fiber draws and retains water, making our stool larger and softer. For the same reason, if we eat a lot of it, it results in a laxative effect. Soluble fiber has another very important property. It is fermented by the bacteria in our colon. The fermentation of soluble fiber generates different substances, including some vitamins and short-chain fatty acids, which can be subsequently absorbed. Since these molecules provide some energy, soluble fiber ends up having some caloric value, usually around 2 calories per gram. More importantly, these short-chain fatty acids exert important functions both directly in the intestine and in our body, such as cancer-protective and cholesterol-lowering effects. The other group of fibers is insoluble fiber. This type of fiber does not dissolve in water. It is not readily fermented by the gut bacteria and provides no calories. Its most important benefit lies in its mechanical properties. While everything else keeps getting smaller as digestion proceeds, insoluble fiber fragments stay intact and large, and so they help move the intestinal content along and accelerate the transit of stools. These are some important examples of soluble fibers. Pectins are found in the white part of citrus fruit, in some types of apples, in brassica vegetables such as cabbage, and in the pulp of many fruits. Beta-glucans are mucilages found in psyllium husks, oats and barley, legumes and eggplants. Carrageenans are another type of mucilage found in seaweeds. Gums are found in seeds and some of them, such as guar gum and gum arabic, are commonly used food additives. Another particular group of soluble fiber are the RFOs, an acronym standing for raffinose family of oligosaccharides, such as raffinose, stachyose, and verbascose. These are a group of undigestible small chains of glucose, galactose, and fructose, abundant in legumes and brassica vegetables, such as cabbage or broccoli. They are very easily fermented and responsible for GI discomfort in individuals who don't regularly eat these foods. These are some important examples of insoluble fibers. Cellulose is a typical component of plant cell walls and is abundant in whole grains, legumes, the skin of fruit and vegetables. It is a chain of glucose molecules, much like starch, although cellulose is completely linear, but the bond between glucose molecules is different and we don't have any digestive enzyme to break it down. The cellulose travels undigested through our small intestine and we cannot extract its glucose. Hemicellulose is made of glucose and other sugars, as well as galacturonic acid, and it is often associated with cellulose. Lignins do not contain sugars and are found in the woody parts of vegetables, such as the seeds of fruits, the bran and the outer husk of grains, and are also abundant in carrots and pears. Indeed, the little grainy texture of pears is due to the presence of lignins. As a general rule, insoluble fiber is prevalent in most whole grains, vegetables, and the skin of fruit, 
while soluble fiber is prevalent in the pulp of fruit and seaweeds. Legumes, nuts, and seeds contain both types of fiber in similar amounts. Also, remember that fiber is associated with plant foods, so there is no significant amount of fiber in meat, fish, eggs, milk, and dairy.